My name is Chase Combs and I've donated a hair sample to the Brazilian Youth and Stress Environment Research Project. I followed my hair sample here to the University of British Columbia uh, in the Weinberg lab and I want to take a look at uh, the process that the sample goes through. Hello, I'm Dr. Joanne Weinberg. I'm at the University of British Columbia in the Department of Cellular and Physiological Sciences. The research in my laboratory focuses on the stress system. We're interested in cortisol and other hormones that are part of the stress system. These hormones help us respond to and cope with stress, but if cortisol levels are high for a prolonged period of time, that can have adverse effects on the body. In addition to all of the other measures we have, this will give us a measure of the person's physiology, of how their body is responding physiologically to all of those factors in the environment, and we can relate that biological response to all of the other measures we have. This will help us understand how we might intervene, how we might help people cope with stress better in these communities. Hi, my name is Wayne, and I am the lab manager for Dr. Joanne Weinberg. I've been working in the lab for the last 28 years, and I will be showing you what we'll be doing with the hair samples that we have collected. Hair samples are collected by tying a loop of string around the hair and then cutting the hair close to the scalp. Once the hair samples are collected, they will be sent to our laboratory for analysis. When we receive them, we store them in a locked cabinet so they're completely safe and secure until we're ready to do the analysis. Each hair sample that we get gets an ID number, so the name of the person who contributed the sample is never used. When we're ready to do the analysis, we open the packet that contains the hair, measure out the amount of hair we need, cut the sample accordingly, transfer it into a conical tube, and then it's ready for processing. The next step is to wash the hair sample. We use a type of alcohol called isopropanol and wash the hair sample twice to be sure we remove all contaminants that might be on the sample. After the two one-minute washes, the isopropanol is poured out of the tube. To dry the hair sample, we put it in a fume hood for at least 48 hours or even more to be sure that all of the isopropanol is evaporated and the hair is completely dry. Once the hair is completely dry, we transfer it into a grinding jar along with two special grinding balls. We then put the jars into a commercial grinder and we grind the hair for two and a half minutes. The grinder shakes the jar back and forth at very high speed and the hair is pulverized into a fine powder. Once the hair is ground, we transfer the powder into a small tube with a cap that's designed to seal very tightly. We then weigh the sample on a very sensitive scale called an analytical balance. It's important to have the weight because that helps us calculate the concentration of cortisol later on. The next step is to extract the sample. By extraction, we mean we want to draw all the cortisol out of the sample into a solution. And the solution we use is methanol, another type of alcohol. To make sure the extraction is as complete as possible, we want to mix the sample with the methanol very well. First we vortex it to really mix it up, and then we put it on a rotator for 24 hours so that the sample is completely mixed and the extraction can be completed. Once the extraction process is complete, we spin the sample down in a centrifuge. This ensures that the powdered sample settles fully to the bottom of the tube and we can pipette off the methanol, which now contains the cortisol. You can now see that after centrifugation, the hair powder has completely settled to the bottom of the tube. We then transfer a set amount of the methanol solution, which now has the cortisol in it, to another small tube. We then put the tube in a speed vac a machine that allows the methanol to be completely evaporated off and only the cortisol will be left in the tube. This whole extraction process is done twice to be sure that all of the cortisol can be extracted from the hair powder. 
Now we're ready to run the assay. The first step is to reconstitute the sample. What that means is we add buffer, a kind of neutral solution, to the tube that has the cortisol dried down inside it. And the cortisol then gets taken up into this buffer solution. We now measure the amount of cortisol that's in the sample using this commercial kit. The first step is to add an aliquot of the sample into a well on this 96 well plate. We then add a solution called TMB to each well. A reaction takes place and the result is a blue color. We then add an acidic solution to stop the reaction and this results in a yellow color. The intensity of the color is a reflection of the amount of cortisol in that sample. The 96 well plate then goes into a plate reader. The plate reader reads the color intensity in each well and the concentration of cortisol is then calculated. Any leftover hair is then placed into a biohazard container and that is sent for incineration. This is the approved method of disposing of all biological samples. 